if I literally hear someone asking me to calm down or to relax one more time, I will literally scream. Okay, that is not what we need. So we're doing things a little bit differently today. I'm going to be talking to you guys about what is generalized anxiety disorder, how it affects me as well as what it really feels like to live with anxiety disorder. So I'm basically going to be giving you guys my raw emotion, 100% honesty, and I'm going to try to leave this video as unedited as possible and as unfiltered as possible. So come with me on this journey, you guys. I'm a little nervous, but uh, we can do this. I hope. Cross and fingers. Let's get started. so many misconceptions about having generalized anxiety disorder what it is how it affects you your everyday life with it so many people ask a lot of questions of the causes and they don't understand the factors uh, especially generalized anxiety disorder a lot of people think it's a combination of multiple kinds of anxiety disorders which is not the case at all and i'm just going to be sharing my story with you guys to bring awareness and hopefully help somebody that is either dealing with the same condition, know somebody that is dealing with the same condition, or maybe is in a relationship with a partner that has this condition. Some people might experience depression symptoms and think that it's a part of um, generalized anxiety. So hopefully in this video, by sharing my story and by giving you guys exactly what it really feels like to live with this condition, you guys can have a better understanding it's a little bit awkward, I must be honest, but I'm going to try my best to just talk to you guys and be open as I possibly can. So if you guys want to find out what it's like really to live with generalized anxiety disorders, as well as how I cope with it, then come with me. my channel <laughs> chill guys I'm nervous eh? and I don't know why I'm so nervous it's almost like I'm doing a video about anxiety and I'm anxious about doing this video so just bear with me please I'm really trying to stay calm so I don't freak out in front of you so a few weeks ago, I spoke to you guys about the different types of anxiety disorders that you can get. And I mentioned the five as per the DSM, um, the DSM-5 actually. And one of them, which was the last one that I mentioned, was generalized anxiety disorder, which is obviously the topic of the day. And I mentioned to you guys that I was diagnosed when I was 17 years old. And I'm just going to talk to you guys. all the time <laughs> okay let's understand what generalized anxiety disorder is if you have missed it from a previous video this is how i described it gad is chronic anxiety as well as unwanted tension and an exaggerated sense of worry about everyday things and sometimes there is little or nothing at all to provoke that feeling and you guys will be shocked as to how many people think they know what it is but in actual fact they don't fun facts about generalized anxiety disorder did you know that it is twice more likely to happen in women than it is to men so basically it's a two to one equation which is insane it's like we get the periods we get the labor we get i mean come on like can we just get a break to be honest with you guys i've been contemplating going to a psychiatrist again 
I feel like I have a couple of different types of anxiety disorders, but the main and prominent one is my generalized anxiety disorder. And a lot of people think generalized anxiety disorder is a mixture of a couple of anxiety disorders like PTSD, OCD, social phobia, or whatever the case is. And it's actually not. It just means that this is a persistent and chronic sense of fear and worry that is just constant. And the worry is so bad that it affects your everyday Day life like during this video for example i'm so nervous to make this video and i don't know why i'm so nervous because the one thing that i told myself when i started my youtube channel is this is for me i mean i love you guys and i thank you guys so much for watching every week but i'm doing this for me i'm doing this for other my therapy if you want to call it i'm doing this to capture moments that mean something to me i'm doing this to um show my kids one day i'm doing this to put it out there and i like to bring awareness and one of my passions is to help people i think that's why i started a career in human resource management and if anybody has ever worked with me then they can attest to just how much training and just how much bond i wanted to have with everyone i'm very misunderstood you guys like a lot of people misunderstand me they they don't they look at me and they think, oh, she's so full of herself or, you know, they just judge you and people will always judge you. This is what I always say. I don't want to go all over the place. And normally what I would do is I would outline my videos. I would plan according to how I want it to go. And that is one trait that we people with anxiety, certainly people with generalized anxiety disorder have. We are like perfectionist to the T. Everything needs to be a certain way and you need to have control. If you lose control, you are freaking out already. I hate surprises. I don't like not knowing. I need everything to be planned accordingly. If you're going to tell me we have a meeting at 10, I need that meeting to happen at 10. You know what I mean? I hate anything unexpected because then I'm not in control and not being in control is a problem for me. Yeah, can't believe I just said that. It's a problem for me and... Ooh, let's not get emotional. Okay, okay, okay. We good, we good, 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 good. We are good, we are good, we are good. We are good. We are good. All right, let's fix my shirt. <laughs> At first I thought I was bossy and that I didn't always understand my anxiety disorder. I always knew that I had something. I always knew that um, I wasn't 100% normal per se. Um, I was a very clever kid. I think I'm still a very smart person if I do say so myself. Okay, sometimes it's better to hoot your own horn. Um, <laughs> but I've always been a very clever kid. I've always been determined, ambitious and driven and just goal driven and just wanting to ace every test, wanting to ace every assignment, wanting to do well, wanting to graduate, be, make a success of my life. Right now I own two businesses, an HR company as well as an events company, which obviously my events company can't run because of coronavirus, but that gives me a lot of anxiety because i feel like i don't have control i don't have control over my own business and not having control over my own business is making me feel like i'm failing i experience it very severely there's a couple of symptoms that i'm going to get to a little bit later on i'm going to talk about eight different symptoms that you can experience with generalized anxiety disorder and you only need three of these to even qualify for a diagnosis. And when I say qualify for a diagnosis, I don't mean self-diagnose, so please. I mean going to an actual psychiatrist to actually go and get your diagnosis and then seeking the necessary treatment, either CBT, psychotherapy, or medication. At first I was on medication when I was about, I remember when I was about 17, um, I remember when I was, uh, look, guys, I'm going all over the place. I'm like, I'm overthinking so much. Like, this is ridiculous. This is the reason why I have to have my outline in front of me and not script what I'm going to say, but just plan it accordingly so that I don't ramble. So I'm just going to go onto my notes right here. I'm sorry, you guys, but I feel like if I don't do this, I'm just going to ramble and ramble and just digress 
and that's not what I want. So if I had to describe it in one sentence, I would say anxiety disorder is constant worry and constant fear that something dreadful or doom is going to happen. Like you fear death, you fear health issues, you fear not having money, you fear um, literally almost anything. You fear that something bad is going to happen to you, something bad is going to happen to the people that you love. You're constantly worrying about them and you know... Like me, for example, I know that I'm doing it when I'm doing it because I go to therapy and in my therapy sessions, I have learned how to be more aware when it happens. I haven't yet learned exactly how to control it when it happens, but I'm getting so much better at coping and dealing with it. And let's be honest, 2020 has been showing everybody flames like... I've got family members who are going through the absolute most, whether financially, whether they've got retrenched, whether whatever the case is. And I just worry. I worry about everybody and I want everybody to do well and I want everybody to do good. I'm worrying about what's happening to someone else and then I want to help them. But because I can't help them, then I start to worry about why I can't help them. And then I start beating myself up because I can't help them. And then I'm worried about why I can't help them and how what I can do in order to be able to help them. And then, then I worry about what I can do and it's it's like a snowball effect you guys like it's a snowball effect that I I just it's the only thing I can't control and it actually it sucks a little um it doesn't suck to have anxiety disorder or to have generalized anxiety disorder but it can get really bad because you overthink about everything and then um, you blame yourself because you couldn't control certain things that you think you're supposed to control, but you can't. It's like, how can you control the economy right now? Like the economy is the way that it is. And you know this, like your rational mind, or let me talk about me. I know this, like my rational mind is telling me, dude, you can't control this. But for some reason, it's like, I, I just can't let go. And it's, it's, it's annoying sometimes really like you just want to be normal you just want to you just want to like stop thinking you just want to shut off and my biggest problem for me is i can't shut off like like i'm probably worrying about what you guys are thinking right now which is like why am i worried about it you know what i mean and sorry you guys I don't hate having generalized anxiety disorder. Let's call it GAD because it's a short version of it. But I don't hate having GAD. I think having GAD actually makes me who I am. It's like what Kanye West says when he talks about his bipolar. I think it was on an interview with Jimmy Kimmel. He was talking about, you know, being, bi being bipolar is his superpower or something along those lines and don't quote me you guys but i will i will try to find that interview and i will try to leave a link in my description box so that you guys can um hear him talk a little bit about him having bipolar and i'm not bipolar thank god or at least i hope i'm not like i said i i'm considering going to a psychiatrist again but i could have you know um developed something else that i'm not even treating that i'm not even aware of so i just want to get my diagnosis again and i will be taking you guys on that journey once i am ready to go i'm not ready yet so don't rush me okay and don't hold me to it but it, it i will do a video when i'm ready i promise you guys and if there's one thing that you can take from me i'm as honest as can be and i always keep my promises and hopefully they can give me a another diagnosis that either confirms that i only have gad or confirms that i've got something else as well i'm a little i'm a little nervous to find out honest honestly because like i do think there's something more like but i don't know like now you see now now i'm worrying about that it's like oh my god you guys don't understand how tough it is to have this condition like really like it's really not easy like I'm a perfectionist, I'm driven, I, you know, I, 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 I care for people, my, I feel like my purpose in life is to help people, <clears throat> Whew. 
this is hard. <laughs> How do people do this? How do y'all do this? How do y'all share your stories? Um, I worry a lot, you guys. Oh my god, I'm I look I'm probably looking ridiculous right now. Please forgive me. My makeup is coming off, but it's fine. Ugh, I don't care. Well, I care, but I shouldn't care. Um, yeah. So I'm just I'm bearing my soul today. Like today, I just I'm gonna share a piece of myself, and I don't know why I keep on getting emotional. I think just understand that like it's not easy and not a lot of people understand it and it is such a common thing you guys like having like just normal anxiety disorder whether it's social phobia ptsd ocd um what else do i mention in my previous video well actually you can check you can check it out i'll leave the link of the previous video where i talk about all the different types of anxiety disorders that there are and maybe you can just um relate to a couple of those but just in general, having anxiety disorder is just not easy. But I think having generalized anxiety disorder where it's an everyday thing. Like for me personally, like I worry at least once a day, every day, if not five times a day, every day. It's been years and years and years and it's kind of like an everyday thing. And I think I've learned to live with it and I've learned to and I've learned to cover it up by helping other people and I love helping other people but I don't think I focus on myself a lot and I think I um I want to there's this there's this need of being perfect like I want to be perfect and of course I'm not perfect like hello duh no one's perfect okay guys clearly this is going to be an emotional journey so um if I cry again don't feel bad for me I'm just going through it. <laughs> it's like a lot of people want to know what are the causes of anxiety disorder. So far, a lot of research has been done and there's not really a clear factor. They talk about other hereditary genes to be pre-exposed to anxiety disorder because it was in your family. And obviously, depending on the environmental factors of where you grow up, that can either heighten your anxiety. For example, apparently babies can be born with with anxiety and i recently found this out that was crazy i'm gonna link i'm gonna leave a link of that video it was actually shocking but apparently some babies are born with anxiety i don't think i was necessarily born with it but i do think that maybe i was pre-exposed to having anxiety and then i grew up in the townships of south africa and i you know i've seen a lot of things i've heard a lot of things you know like gunshots and you know just people dying a lot of poverty a lot of hiv and aids that you see um, a lot of issues that just make people i guess you know they just kind of groom who you are i've witnessed a lot i'm not gonna get into that in this video this is not what that is about but i want to give you an idea of kind of how i grew up those environmental factors i do think contributed a little bit to my anxiety disorder because i think i was about 11 years old when I started experiencing pretty much all, a lot of the symptoms of anxiety that was unexplained. Um, I struggled with migraines, I think for about three years, <laughs> you know, if I'm not mistaken, I actually kind of learned to live with it. And now almost every day when I wake up, I wake up nauseous, you know, it's just part of having anxiety disorder or having GAD rather. So these are the pills that I take for my nausea and they, oh wait. <laughs> That was upside down. I hope you guys can see. But they're called Zofa Rapid Tab 4. And all you do is just take one out and put them under your tongue whenever you feel nauseous. And literally in about five minutes, I'm not nauseous anymore. It's pretty much the only pill that has worked for me so far. And in terms of stress tablets, I take a lot of stress rescue tablets, which you can pretty much find over the counter at any pharmacy or any drugstore. I also take Urbanol, which I recently started because my anxiety disorder sometimes gets so bad or because my GAD rather, I keep on saying my anxiety disorder. Please guys, if I say anxiety disorder, please know that I'm referring to my GAD, but I'm just so used to saying anxiety disorder and not generalized anxiety disorder. But anyways, my generalized anxiety disorder 
um you know has recently gotten bad i think because of 2020 like there's a lot of things that have happened in 2020 you know just the fact that you can't go outside and the fact that you just can't do the things that you normally love to do i love to travel i like to be out of the house so it's been really difficult and a lot of people that have been hiding their gad or their anxiety disorders or their depression or whatever mental illness and mental conditions that they have it's now being heightened and it's kind of being brought to light because you kind of forced to sit at home and face your demons if you've got them but honestly you guys i just feel like why why are we so scared to talk about it why is there so much shame surrounding mental illness like i'm not crazy but i have a condition that has persistent thoughts of worry and fear of doom and unfortunately sometimes they take over my emotions and they take over my body so do i need help yep i do and what i enjoy like i said is therapy talking about it and understanding exactly what you have and bringing awareness to it is probably the best thing that you can do for yourself my psychologist she and i we don't have a bond like a bond as in like she's my friend or anything but i definitely feel a sense of trust with her i feel like i can trust her with my emotions and not a lot of people get to see my emotions in fact the fact that i cried in this video Y'all better not hold that against me, okay? Um, and think, you know, now I'm weak. And again, that's that's my anxiety talking. Sorry. And me just wanting to be perfect all the time, which I'm not, and nobody is, and that's okay. And I understand that that's okay. And sometimes I have to continue to tell myself that, look, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. But, um, you know, the first time I went to my psychologist, she told me one thing that has stuck with me and will probably stick with me for the rest of my life. And I thought I'll share this with you. Number one was no one will listen to you more than your psychologist will. And that hit home. Like, let that sink in for a little bit. Oh, wait. Has it sunk in yet? Okay, cool. Number two, the second thing that she told me, which is absolutely like i i'm still shocked till this day she told me that the the voice that is within me doesn't actually come from me the voice that is within me that is telling me that i'm not good enough i'm never good enough which is just a symptom of having gad you know she told me that it doesn't come from me i always think that everything is my fault and she pretty much told me that that's not my fault because i didn't groom myself to the way that i am i had family i had parents i had people around me and it's not my fault and those two things and just knowing that it's not my fault it's not my fault it's not your fault it's not your fault that you've got a condition is it is it your fault if you get diagnosed with diabetes or your fault if you get diagnosed with cancer no so why do we blame ourselves so much about mental illnesses and think it's our fault that we can't control our thoughts like a lot of people tell you to get over it or tell you to calm down or tell you to relax and it's like stop telling me to relax stop telling me to calm down i get it i get it that i'm being irrational right now i get it that i'm being anxious about something that i'm not supposed to be anxious about but how do you expect me to stop it how do you expect me to stop something that is happening within my brain and I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of people not understanding the condition. I'm sick of people not understanding what we have. And I'm sick of people thinking that if you tell us to relax, we're going to relax. It's like, no, we're not going to relax. The best thing that you can do is it's not that bad. Breathe. Tell me to breathe. Help me to breathe. Tell me it's okay. Tell me it's okay. It's okay. That's what you need to do. Don't tell me to relax. How am I supposed to relax if my brain can't sh even shut down when it's bedtime? Ooh. How am I supposed to relax if my brain can't even shut down when it's bedtime? 
When it's time to sleep, my brain is still up, awake, thinking, 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 and then thinking about the overthinking that I'm overthinking, and then overthinking about that, and then overthinking about why am I still awake at this time. It's insane. It's like such a snowball effect that, and I don't want to paint it as a bad condition to have. Like, you guys, I'm me. Like, I'm happy to be me. I'm, in fact, I wouldn't change it. And I know this is going to sound crazy to you guys. Like, Belinda, if it hurts you so much, why wouldn't you want to change it? Because at the end of the day, it makes me me. It makes me who I am. It makes me want to help you. I wouldn't be sharing this video right now if I didn't have this condition. I wouldn't be able to sit here right now if I didn't care about somebody else that might potentially not understand what they're going through or not have the means to see a psychologist or not want to see a psychologist because maybe they're not ready to face the truth or they're not ready to face what they're going to hear or whatever the case is. And that's okay. Take your time. For the longest of time, when I found out that I had anxiety disorder, initially I didn't know it was generalized anxiety disorder. I just thought I had anxiety disorder. And my understanding of anxiety disorder at the time was simple. Anxiety disorder is the cousin of depression. Boom. That's what I thought it was. That's what my doctor, my, and when I say my doctor, my GP, that's what my GP told me. So I thought, hmm, so I'm slightly depressed, but I'm not that bad. That's literally what I thought I had. So when they gave me like six different kinds of pills to take, I was like, why am I taking all these pills? For what am I taking these pills? I'm not depressed. I'm not depressed. Depressed, I, at the time I thought, is somebody that wants to kill themselves, somebody that hates life, somebody that believes life is not worth living, somebody that, you know, can't be happy, doesn't matter what happens. You know, I just thought, you know, that that's what I've got. So I thought, Heck, I can control it myself. I don't need these tablets. And so I stopped taking medication. I stopped taking medication when I was about 18. And I haven't been on any medication literally since this year again. When I started experiencing the worst symptoms ever. A couple of symptoms, and I'm just going to read them, you guys. I hope you forgive me. According to ADAA.org is feeling nervousness irritable or on edge which is trust me you guys literally for me all the time i'm always on edge when my anxiety gets pushed yeah you don't want to mess with me um two is having a sense of impending danger panic or doom and what this means you guys is exactly what i said in the beginning like i worry a lot about death like come on everybody's going to die but for some reason i worry about it and it's like why do you worry about it then i ask myself why am i worried about it and then it's like you always just you dreading something something bad is gonna happen you're dreading that phone call you're dreading someone's gonna die you're dreading someone's gonna be hurt you're dreading you're gonna get coronavirus and die from it you you know i'm just constantly dreading about something number three is having increased heart rate when i was growing up my heart like i would just feel like it's just beating so fast and so rapidly and you know it's just like like i'm suffocating in my own breath like so i definitely experienced that so so far i'm passing with flying colors yeah not funny number four is breathing heavily like hyper hyperventilation yeah hyperventilating um sweating or trembling i have a thing you guys like my hands like it's very hard for me to keep my hands still i'm gonna try you see like my hands don't really stand still and i don't know why well i do know why let's be honest Number five is feeling weak or tired. And I'll be honest, I don't normally feel weak or tired, but I feel fatigued sometimes for no reason. I'm like, I just woke up. Why am I so tired? And clearly it's because of my anxiety. And I think maybe you might be experiencing the same thing. You just wake up in the morning and you're just so tired. Like you don't understand why that is a symptom as well. Number six, which... Oh my God, this symptom is, whoo, I resonate a lot with the symptom. 
it's um, lack of concentrating and I'm laughing or I'm smiling because I'm remembering every single report card when I was you know from grade like from grade one in primary school up to high school um, all of my teachers were always saying needs to concentrate more needs to concentrate more in fact this brings me to a memory when I think I was in grade two and I was about eight years old and a teacher of mine phoned my parents and actually told them that I need to be on Ritalin because I'm so hyperactive and I can't concentrate for too long. And, you know, I, I wander off into my thoughts and sometimes my thoughts are negative worries and fears. And that's what, that's what that means. I hope that makes sense. Number seven is one of my absolute worst symptoms that I experienced. And that is trouble sleeping when i talk about my insomnia guys my insomnia is bad like i toss and turn well having trouble sleeping which is like i said one of the things that i struggle with like most nights if not every single night and number eight is experiencing gas experiencing gastrointestinal gi problems <laughs> experiencing gastro gastrointestinal problems this can cause irritable bowel syndrome which is a condition that i also have i'm also going to be showing you pills for that so please just hold on which is irritable bowel syndrome and irritable bowel syndrome is basically you having a lot of issues with your stomach abdominal pain gas diarrhea vomiting um you know digestional issues not being able to eat lack of appetite you know so many different things this video is not about iba so i'm not going to be telling you guys exactly but i'm just giving you guys an idea so this is what i take and i wrote i wrote the gas on it because it really does help and they look like this on the inside and i don't remember how much they cost me but i don't think they cost a fortune and all i do is just pop one of these um every day only when i'm undergoing through a lot of stress and you guys may you guys might think yeah but belinda how do i know that i have anxiety disorder because i'm always i also worry like i just lost my job and i'm always worrying about you know money and things like that but what you don't understand is when you lose your job as soon as you get another job that worry disappears the worry goes because now you've got the money again with me I can have all the money in the world. I can have a good job or a business or whatever the case is, but that worry is constant. It doesn't leave. And that's the one thing that I hope you guys take away from this video is understanding that you can worry that is a part of life. Stress is a part of life. Even depression sometimes can be a part of life. Some people can get depressed um, because they just lost their parent or coronavirus or whatever the case is. But when it's so excessive and it's so constant, then you might need to get yourself diagnosed. And when I say get yourself diagnosed, once again, you guys, I mean seek professional help from other psychiatrists or a psychologist. You must remember psychologists will not give you a diagnosis. Psychologists will only help you talk about it. So rather go to a psychiatrist, get a good diagnosis so you can start the necessary treatment. The reason why I want to bring awareness to this condition a lot is in the black community certainly i'm not sure about in other communities but in the black community where i grew up it wasn't spoken about you know i didn't know i i didn't know what anxiety disorder was until i got diagnosed with it you know what i mean like it you, we don't prioritize mental health and i think i'm trying right now by dedicating a couple of series and playlists on my channel to give you guys a lot of awareness on mental health to give you guys a bit of more understanding and i will be doing a lot more videos on this topic but for this video i just wanted to be human and pretty much talk to you guys without trying to be perfect having a good support system i find really works for me and obviously talking about it and just kind of like teach people how you need to be treated you know what I mean? Like if you are sensitive to certain things, like treat, tell people that you are, so, you are sensitive to certain things so that they don't make you anxious for no reason. 
I sometimes feel like if somebody knows that you have anxiety disorder or generalized anxiety disorder and they do something to heighten your anxiety disorder, for some reason, I just think then they don't love you. I don't know why I think like that. Maybe it's just me overthinking again, but sometimes I just think like, if you know I've got this condition, why would you want to stress me out? You know, kind of a vibe. I also find that exercising helps quite a lot. Whenever I exercise, there's a lot of endorphins and serotonin that gets uh, released, which is pretty much like a happy chemical in your brain, I think it is. Always remember one thing. You need to love yourself no matter what. You need to love yourself. When you look at yourself in the mirror, you need to love what you see. You need to give yourself unconditional love. You need to give yourself unconditional love with no judgment. You need to understand that you are being human and allow yourself to be human. And if being human and you being human means you have generalized anxiety disorder, then so be it. There's a lot of other humans with other different issues, you know, worse than, much, much, much worse than generalized anxiety disorder. And as much as I'm trying to bring awareness to this condition, because I personally have this condition, I understand that my condition could seem minimal to somebody else because maybe somebody else has, you know, more issues or bigger issues than what I have, but it's still an issue for me and we cannot minimize issues based on somebody having a bigger issue. My story is just as important as your story. Your story is just as important as my story. So I would love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments section below. Share your story. Tell me what you've got. Tell me if you are coping with it. If you're not coping with it, tell me if you can relate. Tell me if you hate this video, you know, um, obviously be sensitive, you guys, because yeah, I always try to be kind to other people. So please be kind to me and please subscribe to my channel there's a lot more content that i have in store for you guys and also don't forget to check out my other videos i think this is enough for now i think uh, maybe we can call this part one yeah i think this i think this could be part one of uh, my story with anxiety disorder and if you guys want me to delve into it a little bit more like anything else that i might have forgotten to mention Ask me questions in the comment section below and I will answer them as truthfully as I possibly can. I just hope that this video helps you or helped you identify or relate or maybe to identify these symptoms in somebody that you might know. And um, yo guys, I want to show you what I'm doing. Look at this. Look at that. Literally tapping my leg and I don't know why I'm anxious again. And I'm probably anxious because I don't know if this video is going to be a mess, if it's going to make sense in the end. But um, I hope you guys learned something and don't forget to like this video, subscribe and I will check you guys in my next video. Bye Mwah. and thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys soon. I'll see you guys next week.